Welcome back to another episode of Tuesdays with Nick, guys. And thank you so much for tuning in from the last episode. This week, we're going to talk about something very spooky. We're going to talk about five abandoned homes in Singapore and what they're being used for now. On the keyboard, let's go. Hey, load leh. What my internet like there? Okay, so our content writers put together five of these that they think we should check out and I think it's gonna be good. Number one, we have New Tiu Road, abandoned housing estate. So when it was abandoned, according to the reports, it was supposed to be on block in the year 2002, but then remained vacated ever since. So why was it abandoned? The residents moved out to Jurong West as the place went on block. So how it was used? Built in 1979, three three-storey flats in the estate, number three to five, accompanied by a wet market and a playground. Eh? This is like very familiar, only. So the estate is currently occasionally used as Fibua. Okay. For those of you who never go NS and don't know what FIBOA or you police, you maybe also don't know. Even depends, confirm don't know. FIBOA is fighting in built up area. In other words, because we are no longer jungle, jungle, utan, utan, right? Nowadays, the government knows that most warfare is going to happen in buildings, in let's say wartime, if the fight really comes to Singapore, then we need to be able to navigate like blocks, uh, flats, uh, high-rise buildings. Uh. So they've just basically converted this estate to a FIBOA training site. Lor. SAF keeps it out of bounds to the public, although this was initially a residential area. It's lacking in maintenance and left with dirty walls. Ah, that explains it that night at the that people side. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Okay, let me tell you a story. So when we go to the FIBOA site, there's be exercises in the morning and then uh, in the night, there'll be night exercises. After that, everybody will just go to sleep inside the flats. Imagine the whole flat is a little bit run down and no doors. They remove all the doors for some reason. I think safety reason? I don't know, man. So I was sitting against a door, like right in front of me was a door. A friend of mine was laying just right in front of me. And in the middle of the night, I got up and uh, it was quite blurry la, my vision because you know you just wake up and stuff like that I think 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning and there was just this uh, black figure standing over the doorway and my friend woke up and he asked me hey why I just couldn't look away la. then I just told him nothing and went back to sleep next day he asked me la, hey why ah? I said I, I still maintain I say nothing but it was something these things do exist I guess you really hunt to Drop in the comment section. I believe there's a reason uh, if not these houses won't be you know abandoned. Let's go to number two. Ji Guan Chiang house yeah. Ji Guan Chiang eh. <laughs> Range Road Art Deco House. When it was abandoned, the house was left empty after Qi family left the country because of the Japanese occupation in 1941. Why it was abandoned is because of what wow, messy legal tension ownership of the house. Taiwan drama. Ah, what is that? How it used to be, it was popular in the 1930s and stood out because it had geometric design and bold colours. Let's see. Fuu yo. This looks like top hat. Why they make circle circle like that? Yeah, maybe it was a thing in the past. So what's the current estate? Lee Tat finally won the legal battle in December 2008 and then the house is currently owned by Lee Tat Developments and has been given conservation status in 2008. Due to its 100,000 square feet land size and prime location, the estate is estimated to be worth more than 400 million today. It was widely known as first chastised as the Wellington House. The great granddaughter of Mr. Chi says that it's inspired by the word well, meaning good. What happened there? Not so well, are we? Oh, check it out. Look at this estate. Oh, the frontage is just circular to the back. It's nice, like it opens up. It gives me the vibe like they're trying to design it around like a four leaf clover. If you look at it from a sky view down, it might look like a floor leaf clover kind of thing. Like. Oh, your it means rotten now. You got roots growing all over, private property, no parking. But dude, it's sitting in the midst of Orchard 25 Grinch Road. My friend, prime land. Setting here is after he fight for 1930s, only until 2008, he get the house. Get the house, conservation, cannot build anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Surprise, motherfucker. Speaking of sibling rivalry, I think this thing is very common. Some people may ask me, uh, is it really true? No, we got uh, rich people so human, everybody, you know, fighting over one piece of property or several assets. 
is very real and very common in Singapore. You see this one just came out in Mothership. It says, uh, this is a recent post. Three siblings in Singapore fighting over 3.1 million inheritance. Elders claims he was the favorite. Favorite, so what? What does the wheel say? Hey, this photo taken in Sunrise Avenue, eh? Yeah, we saw a couple of Sunrise Avenue <laughs> units, that's why, and still marketing a few, and uh, let's not go there. Number three, this name very familiar, Cashin House. Built on a pier in 1906 by Irish Henry Cashin for the rubber estate. When it was abandoned, 2009, okay lah, quite recent ma. It was abandoned and forgotten when Cashin passed away. Forgotten sir. We got one bungalow down there by the sea, by the pier. Ah, you know, hey grandson, don't forget lah. One eternity later. Hey, go man. Akong, that one, forget lah. No lah, it's just worth several million only, nothing one. And then now it's fenced up by the Singapore Land Authority. How it was used? It used to be the Japanese... Oh, now it makes sense. It used to be used by the Japanese as a makeshift brothel during the Japanese occupation. After the war, the Cashin family reclaimed it and turned it into a week... weekend resort, yeah. We'll get you so excited that you'll never want to leave. The list of things to see and do is too much to believe. Seriously? What is the current state? In 2013, it has been fenced up and closed off to the public according to the URA Draft Master Plan. The building will be restored and become a new visitor gateway to the western part of Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve. So there are plans to restore it to a new visitor gateway in Lim Chukang Nature Park, slated to open in year 2022. This is an impression. Children, you won't be so happy to look at these photos if you know what transpired here many years ago. If you would see, it's a very, very nice plot of land. Actually, it's facing out, you know, into a water body. You've got lush greens all around. Oh my god. This very nostalgic stone tables and the stone chairs. Okay lah, let's forget the past and move forward into art gallery. Next up, we have Matilda House. Eh, this one I know lah. When it was abandoned, after the house fell into disuse, it was acquired by the government in the mid-1980s and gazetted for conservation by the URA in 2000. Why it was abandoned? Down here it says, due to lack of use and maintenance, the house fell into ruins and inspired rumours of being haunted. And it cannot be demolished because there were simultaneous incidents in which the workers who tried to tear down the construction passed on unexpectedly. Eee, this gives me the chills. Just the other day we were there, right? And uh, got worker working on <laughs> Just beside, right? When we were shooting the thing. Hey, you still plan? I talked to him. Uh, I talked to the worker who was working there. I said, hey, bro, stop for five minutes. Just five minutes on, get a shot. He said, okay, eh? that guy okay. He confirmed both Are you sure? Are you sure? Better check. Similar to the Cashin house, this landed belonged to Cashin. Ah, no, no, this is familiar. They are the same owners. Matilda House and Brothel by the Bay. <laughs> Same owners. Sorry, children. Similar to Cashin House, this landed belonged to the Cashin family. Wow, Cashin very cash in, yeah, not cash out, eh, bro. The wealthy Cashin family, spearheaded by Irish lawyer Joseph William Cashin, 1844, owned properties in many parts of Singapore, including the famous Matilda House. So you know, ah, if Matilda House, if a treasure trove asks you go and work, say no. Just say no. So this was built by Alexander Cashin in name of his wife, which was Matilda, something like that. The bungalow is in ruins today and it possesses certain features in its glorious past, such as the red roofs, the white walls, and the two large staircases. I slid down the staircase. I know it's wonderful, glorious. Got scolded by management for doing it. The single-story building with six bedrooms occupies 417 square feet. This one not haunted, sumpah. Really, I went through the whole thing. One, one part of it is being used as a management office. There's another as a function room. I think another is a reading room or something like that. Maybe last time got hantu. It was long driven away already by all the residents around it. The building was surrounded by barbed fence in the early 2000s and installed CCTV. No one is allowed to enter the perimeter for exploration. No need to explore. Nick Tan go already. In 2015, it became the clubhouse. Maybe they brought an exorcist in. La. Maybe there was something there before. I don't know. It became a clubhouse for the residents. Yes, as I explained to you already. Number five. Istana Wood... Eh, how to pronounce this one? Wood Neil? 
Bro, you look at this photo. Looking at the photo gives me the creeps, man. No clear path, there's no real root to it. It's just the grass has like bulldozed a path forward. It's just utan. It's all forest all around. And the house already like uh, run down thousand years, maybe. Count Dracula or some terrorist or some drug dealer has been holding this place for a while. When it was abandoned, Istana Wood Nick has been cordoned off in April 2015. Why? Because Pablo Escobar is using the place. La. Oh, look at this. This was his previous glory. Ah, ah makes sense. It suffers a fire in 2006 and has been deemed beyond repair. It is deemed structurally unsafe. And the iconic blue roof has collapsed and uh, its railings are brown and rusted and the plants have found their way and thrive in the cracks, okay. This was a glorious kind of castle type, you, you got lovely blue roofs. So how it used to be, the mansion was built in the late 19th century by for the Sultan, fourth wife, Sultana Khadija. Before she died in this house, Sultana Khadija sold the property to Sultan Abu Bakr's son. Sultan Ibrahim. He rebuilt the Istana Woodney in the 1930s for his Scottish born wife, Helen Bartholomew. Subsequently, the house was used as general's headquarters and as a military hospital. So the current state now remains empty and uh, covered in vegetation and decay. So sad. Let's see. There's a walkthrough. Eh? Check it out. Istana Woodney. Whoa, lovely. There's a walkthrough. Hey, it's not high devs, yeah? Who this guy? Ah? Who he? This grand hall of the entrance you're stepping through is graffiti maximum ready. So confirm guarantee Pablo Escobar man come before now. In the day is is not uh it's not menacing. It just looks like a druggie's house. Oi! Something is not right here. You see this bathtub? I leave it for you to infer, yeah. This one can be so many things. Suicide. Uh, I don't know, man. Obviously, it was burned down. Oi, Abang. Why suddenly got one guy behind one? Don't like that. Eh? I want to bring home to must say something, bro. Look at here. It got pig. Eh? It got furniture. Eh? Wrapped up one. Eh? Who using this place as storage? Eh? Dude, interesting. Eh? Check out the... <laughs> it is fucked up already, but you can still see the lovely detailing. You see the rails. You don't see this nowadays or oh, I haven't seen this in many homes so this is dual entry staircase going up connecting into a divide and goes up again very lovely it's the kind of like Cinderella staircase you know and uh, just look at the detailing on this thing the architecture is really sublime so we're up on the second floor open courtyard well it is open now my guess is it was a roof and so by the structure of this thing it was a grand hall uh. Hey, why is there new furniture in this place? I don't understand. Is this place closed up? If this place is not closed up, it's, it's heritage here. It's interesting. Just watch your step. La. It, it, I can hear the guy shuffling through on the ground. It's a ton of like glass and sharp objects and, and trash. Comment below if you want me to visit this place. I, okay, in the day, it looks fine. We will give you a home tour of the place if you like. Tonight, huh? So, bonus! How are abandoned houses treated in Singapore? Let's see what the Straits Times says. Abandoned house in Upper Thompson with a skeletal remains of two... Eee! Two sisters were found going up for state auction. In this derelict terrace house, the skeletal remains of two women laid undiscovered for years. The house belonged to a... Uh, a pair of reclusive sisters, Madam Pearl Tan Lee He and a former civil servant, Madam Ruby Tan, would have been 81 and 68 respectively in 2006. But in 2006, the NEA officer entered the house for mosquito check. The workers found a human skeleton in toilets. Yeah? In September 2015, the contractor hired by the BCA entered the house of an erected temporary roof where the roof has collapsed and found another set of bones of human skull and thigh bone. What's that? In the roof, they hide the bone? Neither set of skeletal remains could be identified by DNA obtained by the bone samples and the state coroner in both cases ruled out foul play. Conspiracy! But delayed an open verdict on the case of death as they could not be determined by state court by coroner Marvin Bay. The Straits Times also visited the house this week and found that the rusted gates locked and wheat growing from them, the house which sits on 1,720 square feet of land is about the size of two four 
room housing board flat. This one obviously is a large inter terrace or corner terrace. So international property advisor Ku Sui Yong says that the value of the land is estimated to be 1.7 mil to 1.8 mil for landed homes in the location. 1.7 to 1.8, very hard to find today for this kind of size. I, my guess is this was, uh, when was it? Article in year 2018, makes sense. Today, if you want to find this kind of plot of land, 1.7, 1.8, don't have. 2 mil plus minus you can find. Got two skeletons or more. One of those thinking of making a bid for the auction is Mr. Raymond Oke, a contractor in his 40s who lived Oh, siala, you live next door and he rented the house next to 17 Jalan Pantai for 5 years and never met the sisters. Fishy, fishy. He said that it was a big problem living next to the abandoned house except for worries about mosquito breeding. Mr. Okay, you okay? Ah? 